at 10 tonight, our KPRC2 investigates team has been working hard to solve the mystery behind the death of a Clear Lake woman. Her remains were found in the jaws of an alligator. Well, tonight we have obtained some new information that sheds light on what most likely happened to her. Here's investigator Joel Eisenbaum, and we do want to warn you this story contains some information not suitable for children. It was shocking. It's been a mystery for nearly a month. How did a missing 63 year old Clear Lake area woman end up in the jaws of an alligator? Whatever did happen, it all went down within a mile of the victim's home in Clear Lake's well to do Brook Forest subdivision. And it involved an alligator well known to longtime locals. There's never been an alligator, a person attacked here. I didn't think there's not a dog attacked here. Robin Perrier, a retiree living with her longtime partner, went for a walk sometime at night, May 27th, her family says. Her partner went to sleep, and the next morning, Robin wasn't back. On foot, I tried to walk the most direct route between Perrier's home and where she was found. We're trying to figure out how that lady got down there. That route, the day we walked it, had high grass and a no trespassing sign. An improbable path, we thought, for a 63-year-old woman walking at night. At the light, turn right onto El Dorado Boulevard. We also took the Google Maps prescribed trail between where per year started and where she ended up. It's a circuitous path with twists and turns. Another option that just didn't make a lot of sense to us. There is perhaps a more direct and certainly more heartbreaking route that Robin Perrier could have taken to end up where she did. And it involves this bridge, only a five minute walk from her front door and from here directly into the water. This is Robin Perrier's son. And for the first time publicly, he's unraveling the mystery of his mother's death in Horsepen Bayou, a mystery not yet officially solved by police or even the medical examiner. Well, she had previous suicide attempts beforehand. One almost about a year ago and another in January of last year. That involved horsepin. One involved horsepin and another was in Galveston Bay. Daniel Perrier says his mom could not swim but had a history of trying to end her life in the water. And Daniel shared with us the note his mom penned to him before her fateful stroll. We'll leave the contents of that note private, but this was a years long personal struggle for Robin per year. These previously missing pieces now solve a mystery for the masses, but for Robin per year's family, it's just plain excruciating. When it comes to suicide, it's a very complicated issue. You know what I mean? It's never something that's really easy to understand. But at this point, I just want to be able to just move on with my life. That very sad and very real possibility wasn't even on my radar when I started investigating this. Perrier's family for years trying to get her help. If you, a family member or friend, has suicidal thoughts or behavior, there are resources available, including the new National Suicide Hotline. That number is 988. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, 2 News.